It usually starts with colours, pictures, textures. It's a challenge to make real what you're seeing before it disappears. Street art can come out of anything, any inspiration, you know, stuff that you see during your day. And for us, it's got a lot to do with collaboration. You know, we've got a community. It's not about tagging, making your name bigger than everyone else. You know, growing up, that was our classroom. That's part of the culture. But street art is much bigger than that. There's a lot of people going up against Target, but the real issue is that there's nothing for these young kids to do. They interact with the medium in the way that they know it. It's a matter of opportunity, really. To most, this is just a dirty wall. Forgotten. Ignored. But to us, it's a canvas. In this moment, with a wall in front of us, it's all about what we see. I was a cynic. I was, when Nathan put the idea to me in the car, I was totally skeptical and I sort of went, it's not going to happen. I just can't see the Lismore community going for it. And Nathan and I have grown up in country towns and I think we've both experienced feeling really disenchanted with the opportunities available for young people in our communities. Yeah, the, the place was this kind of barren place, you know. There was there was nothing here. It was just plain brick. The place was filthy. Nobody wanted to walk through here because it was just this kind of this dark, ominous energy that it had about it. I put in a proposal to council, and it wasn't really the right time. So they, I think they denied it, or it just got pushed aside. And then we put a second one in. And then it was perfect timing, so they kind of jumped on the opportunity. Showing them pictures and images of tagging that was already in the laneway and the amount of people that didn't really like it. So it was, it was pretty much just to show that this place can be used as something for people to, to come and have a look at. And they can appreciate it and they can respect street art in a different way. The culture that's in Lismore has pretty much fueled this whole project. You know, it was the reason that we started it was to to get the locals involved and to have that sense of community. Um, the, the street art scene in Lismore and the whole Northern Rivers area is based on community. You know, everybody, everybody loves it. Everybody's a part of it. Nathan's idea was that because it's the back alley gallery, he did want that gallery type feel so he his idea was to have um, frames around everybody's work. We're going to come back here tomorrow to do up some kind of like ornate frames around each piece so we get here at about 10 o'clock and we mask them up, paint them up and yeah pretty much just go from there just artists fill it in do whatever they want. I think that initial process of, of painting those walls black, doing the frames, because we kind of knew each other, but it sort of formed us as a group, a yeah. cohesive group. There's no there's no major sort of egos involved, so it was really kind of, just had a real sort of flow on effect, you know, who wants this space, who, you know, who can fit a piece in here, and as a result of that prepping process, we became really close. Like yeah, it's, it brought us together as friends. Yeah. Uh, we're at Egan's Lane, the back alley gallery. Um, started the 27th of October last year, and this whole place was completely blank. There was absolutely nothing here apart from a few little tags and bits and pieces. There wasn't any kind of note of street art whatsoever. 
always just had some kind of an affinity with this place, so using this place as a canvas, which is directly in the middle of town, it just seemed perfect and fitted. Whenever I'm in there, there's always people taking photos or just walking around, you know, they take their kids in there for a, for the day trip. I've had people tell me that they've come from like Tweed Heads to come check this place out specifically. And they come in, you know, they, they're having their lunch and then they're doing their morning things, they're getting their coffee before they go to work. And these days, people love coming through there. We hope and hoped from the very beginning that this would open doors for young people to get involved and for, for youth to have something constructive to do within their own community. Graffiti and street art's been kind of like a self-sustainable subculture for a long time, regardless of public opinion. Um, yeah, I think there is, there has been, you know, a public shift to an extent lately. Yeah, I think um, with things like this, um, the more positive work going on, the less time people have to go out and do the wrong thing. It just kind of creates awareness that people are actually uh, making art. You know, it's not, it doesn't have to be illegal. If you have really good artists come in and paint the, paint the walls out, it definitely prevents, it's like a graffiti prevention. You know, you got some people that they think, oh, it's graffiti, vandalism, you know, kids just getting around tagging all that stuff, but you actually, the ones that are actually saying that stuff, if they actually get out and get down in the alleyways and have a look what's going on, they can actually see for themselves I think maybe it's become a bit more mainstream and it's probably become, it's become a pretty big movement as well. It's become pretty international. Yeah, I think, I think that's good working in collaboration with the, the artists around the area and encouraging the young people to express themselves in a positive way yeah, and give them spaces to yeah, utilise their skills. Hey, I think that's excellent. Initially, it is a way of just getting your name out there. You know, you've got, you've got your tag and you've got your piece. The piece is the nice, big, colourful thing that gets the attention, but the tag is the thing that keeps your your street cred going. Um, and generally, when there's nice, big pieces of art up in the streets where people generally tag, they they're most likely not going to do it anymore because they respect the artists that are up on the wall. These are the people that they look up to, and they're happy for them to stay there without being destroyed they find other places to do it. We had the funding for stage two to go, like ready to go, so we kind of sat back for a couple months. It was a lot easier to organise the second stage because we knew what we did wrong. The giant piece that Guido did, it kind of draws people through the laneway. You might walk past it and not, not notice anything, but that being the start of stage two has actually brought people down to even notice stage one. And to watch that guy work is just incredible. He looks at a photo from his, from his mobile phone, climbs a ladder, and then before you know it, it's just this larger than life piece that just, you know, it draws a crowd. I read a piece um, talking about how she'd always perceived Lismore as being dilapidated and something to avoid, particularly the back laneways, and that since the back alley gallery has been the back alley gallery, she has, it, it's, it's changed how she feels about the space and Lismore entirely, that she enjoys going to see the laneways and she's got a different perspective of Lismore, which is, it's really nice feedback, it was really nice to hear. I don't know, we kind of had this weird feeling like of ownership of this laneway that we walk through, this is, this is what we've done and that all these people are here to see this area and it, I don't know, it, it was this odd, odd feeling of, it's not so much fame, 
or anything like that, but like we're walking through barricades and we're seeing all these people just hanging out and talking and having breakfast and to see a good couple hundred people just having fun in the laneway, you know, just hanging out, having breakfast and looking at the art, taking photos in front of it and the um the Red Bull truck down the bottom is this big old vintage truck with decks on the back of it and people break dancing playing music in the streets. It was so cold but it didn't seem like it bothered anybody. They were kind of happy to be in that one area. Absolutely nothing to do. We've got everything organised which is for the first. You know, the last couple of stages have been chaos, just in the sense of not being able to, you know, get organised on that right time. And you know, now we're ahead of it. We've had six weeks to plan this whole thing, like the whole street festival that we're doing. So that's been a pretty good learning curve. Pump this corner, just be good when everything's sort of set up and yeah. can just sort of ease into it. Then a bit of mucking around to start off with, but. Yeah, that's good. Through networking and, and, and what's happened, we've met an amazing group of people that were all willing to donate their time and their equipment in order for it to happen. So, you know, having having fibs and, and basics and snarl, having all these amazing artists in, in one space was really good incentive to do it, but it was our networking and the people that we knew that gave us the ability and the means to do it, I guess. Bibbs is one of Australia's best street artists, graffiti writers. He's a pioneer of this scene. And for him to jump on board so easily, you know, he loved the idea from the beginning. Favourite artists from all three stages would have to be Basics. The last piece he did in stage three was just mind blowing. I seen his outline there on the ground, sketched up on paper, and I just shook my head and said, "Man, that's that's incredible." With um, stage three and having the street party, we didn't want it to just be live music. We we wanted the whole the whole community, the whole Lismore community, to feel like there was something in this space for them. And I think that was one of the the really surprising things was how many different people, different backgrounds, age groups. Like we think, you know, there's a specific demographic that's going to like street art, and they're you know going to be essentially you know youth with a bit of a sort of background in in what it's about. But no, that, that event really brought home the different and diverse sort of groups that really, really appreciated it. You know, the, the amount of connections that we've made doing this project has been amazing. You know, we've got people from all over the world that want to be a part of this, and all over the country, more specifically. You know, there's, there's so many amazing artists in this area that just want to be a part of it because it, it's it's reminiscent of what street art and graffiti used to be like down in Melbourne. And I've had artists that you know, started off the Melbourne laneway to say that, that it is it's just like a little mini Melbourne laneway. You know, the amount of people that want to be a part of it is amazing. It, it's pretty um, endearing. Yes. I hope the future of the laneway is this place where people are comfortable to go into and just you know, just hang out and I'd like to see some chairs and tables just set up so people can just sit there and just be a part of it, you know, become part of the furniture. And not just have it as a, a little tourist destination but just as a part of the town where people just they, they go. They hang out, it's a little meeting space.
I hope that the laneway as it is now creates a future for other artists on other walls for, for other people to do around Lismore. We've, we've brought life to an area that was really dilapidated and really overlooked and Lismore's rich with this sort of space and I hope that people can see the positive ramifications of what's happened and, and see that it, it brings people in and it brings life to our CBD which is, it's, it's a pretty beautiful place to live Lismore. So I hope that other shops jump on board and other shops get people to put art on the back of their shops and that it just continues and that Lismore becomes this creative hub and it nourishes its creative community. Whether people just see this as graffiti or view it as legitimate street art, in towns like this, artists see impact, replacing something old with something fresh. In this moment, with the wall in front of us, it's all about what we see. And what we see is just the beginning.